Hey, what's up, everyone? Danny here. Oh, geez. Hit the water bottle. Well, gotta redo that take. Hey, what's up, everyone? Danny here. This is the Crucial P1, and it's one of the most affordable NVMe SSDs on the market right now. This is what you'd consider a budget NVMe drive, which seems a little odd to say because for a while, the word NVMe usually didn't jive too well with the word like budget. Uh, but with the latest advances to flash technology, we're on an all-time low when it comes to prices for flash storage. Crucial sent this over for me to check out, so I'm going to give you my thoughts on it after I used it in my own personal system on a daily basis. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'll let you know how you can actually win one of these exact drives for your own system, which should hopefully be an upgrade for 99.9% .9 of the viewers out there. Uh, but before I talk more about the giveaway, you need to know more about this drive so that you could see if you'd even want to win it in the first place. So let's check it out. So the Crucial P1 uses Micron flash memory and is advertised to have a sequential read and write speed of 2,000 and 1,700 megabytes per second. If you're comparing this to a mechanical drive or a SATA solid state drive, that is very fast. It's in the ballpark of 10 times faster than a mechanical drive and 3 to 4 times faster than SATA SSDs in sequential read and write. Now you may be looking at these numbers and saying, wait up, I've seen Samsung Evo 970s, which is probably the most popular high performance consumer NVMe SSD right now. Uh, and that has an advertised read speed of 3,500 megabytes per second and a write speed of 2,500 megabytes per second. So isn't that one better? You would be correct. That is better, but it's also a lot more expensive. The 970 EVO costs more than double the P1. As of making this video, the 1TB P1 is regularly priced at $120, but it can frequently be found for $100 or less. I've seen it as low as $85 on sales with promo codes. That's less than 10 cents per gigabyte, which is a ratio a lot of people have been waiting for. The 1TB 970 EVO, on the other hand, sits regularly around $250, and I don't think I've ever seen it dip below $200 even on sale. So yes, the 970 is better, but the P1 comes in at less than half of the cost. The Crucial P1 was not made to directly contend with drives like the 970. It was actually made to be a cost-friendly option to get better performance than SATA SSDs, and it does that by using 3D QLC flash memory or a quad-level cell, which is a newer flash technology. So for those of you who are not too familiar with these terms, there are four levels of flash memory that you'll commonly see. There's SLC, MLC, TLC, and QLC, which stands for single, multi, triple, and quad level cells. And this refers to how many bits are stored per NAND cell. The more bits you can store per cell, the more storage capacity you have for a fixed number of cells. But QLC writing four bits to each cell means that they're gonna be worn down quicker. So the drive will have a shorter lifespan overall. And more bits per cell also means the performance in terms of speed is going to take a hit because there are more voltage states to check. If you want to learn more about leveled cell technology and how SSD work in general, that's going to be beyond the scope of this video, but there are two videos I'd recommend. One from Linus's Tech Quickie, which gives a pretty easy to digest explanation, and the other is a slightly more in-depth look, and that one's from Steve over at Gamers Nexus. Both videos have great animations to help make it easier to understand, but the TLDR version with respect to the Crucial P1 is that QLC is the cheapest because it is the slowest and it won't last as long. And I know that sounds pretty bad, but don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. To help with the slower performance, the P1 has SLC caching, which writes to the cells as if they were SLC when space allows. So one bit per cell and then later it folds them to four bits per cell. One important thing to note about the caching is that it is variable. So the cache size scales depending on how filled your drive is. When it's empty, you're gonna have about 10% of the total drive capacity in SLC cache. But as the drive fills up, it reduces to around 1%. Meaning if you're transferring anything really large when the drive is really full, you'll start to see slower performance speeds. But if you're not one to keep your drive from filling to the brim or you, know, you don't do much bulk file transferring, then this isn't something that you're gonna need to be as concerned about. And I mentioned that QLC has the shortest rated lifespan out of the bunch, uh, but that doesn't mean it's just gonna like croak one year after you start using it. Uh, well, that actually depends, I take that back. It actually depends on how much you write to your drives uh, on a daily basis. The one terabyte P1 is rated for 200 terabytes of writing. So to put that into perspective, if you write 100 gigabytes to your drive, Every single day, it would take you 2,000 days to hit that rated endurance, or roughly five and a half years. That's 100 gigabytes every single day for five and a half years. I'm sure there are some people out there who are writing that much data. 
to their drives or even more, but I know for a fact that I don't, and probably a majority of the viewers out there considering a budget NVMe option like this, they likely won't either. So if drive endurance is something that you're really worried about, you know, try to estimate your typical usage and then ask yourself, you know, by the time you write that much to your drive, will storage technology have become even cheaper or have improved to the point where you would have replaced the drive anyways? But with all that aside, let's now take a look at some of the performance numbers from the P1. First, we'll take a look at Crystal Disk Mark, which is a synthetic test that runs a variety of different situations. I did five passes to get a good average and weed out any lucky runs, and I tested in both the default 1GB and then also the larger 32GB test size. The sequential test is going to be what you see the manufacturers advertising. The various 4KB tests are random operations in small 4KB blocks, and the tests were left at the default pairings of Q depth and threads. I also ran all these tests with the drives empty, filled up about halfway, and then filled up almost to the max to see how that performance with the variable SLC caching affects it. So I have a bunch of different shots to show on screen. If you want to pause it to take a look at them in more in detail, feel free to. But the most important thing I noted was that the performance of the drive is pretty much spot on with the advertised numbers and is very consistent for all the tests with the exception of when the drive was at full capacity where you'll see it slow down quite a bit, specifically on the large 32 gigabyte test scenario. Next is the most common real world use that would push the rated read and write speeds and that's the simple transferring of files. In this first situation, I have the drive decently filled about two thirds of the total capacity. I write over some different file sizes to the P1. The first file is a 1GB file and it happens so fast that the transfer status window doesn't even show up. I'll show you it again at a quarter speed and as you can see, it pretty much happens instantly. Next was the 4GB video file, something pretty representative of what I do a lot actually when I'm rearranging my drives with content I make for the channel. And it finishes within a few seconds. If you watch the transfer speeds, it roughly maintains the advertised write speeds of 1.7GB per second. The last file is a pretty big one, 26 gigabytes, which was chosen at random by zipping up six copies of that video file we just transferred. And the drive manages to complete it in roughly 15 seconds. But if you look at the speed, it's a bit slower at around 1.4 gigabytes per second. Now let's look at the person who likes to keep their SSD topped off. Here I have the drive 90% filled up. And as I drop the one gigabyte and four gigabyte files, you see basically the same results as earlier. They are lightning fast. That SLC cache is doing great work. Now we're going to drop that larger file and pay attention to this one because this is where we're going to see the effects of that shrinking SLC cache because of how filled the drive is. The transfer starts off going great, over 1GB per second, but then it hits a wall and plummets the speeds that you normally see with mechanical hard drives. As a result, the total time the transfer took was 1 minute and 51 seconds, which averages the transfer to about 240 megabytes per second over the duration, which is a lot slower than the advertised speeds and even slower than a lot of SATA SSDs. So the most important thing is to determine what your use case of the drive would be and how many write cycles you need it to last for. Um, if you occasionally do big file transfers but are mainly using it as a boot drive to store your uh, Steam library, music, and movies, uh, then I think this drive provides a really good value. It's priced competitively against 2.5 inch SATA SSDs of the same capacity, but with the M.2 form factor, you're also gaining the benefit of reducing two connectors coming from your motherboard and power supply that you'd otherwise have to cable manage, and you're getting those higher gigabyte plus read and write speeds that you normally won't see in SATA. Um, but yeah, that's my assessment of the drive. I think it's a good value. What do you think about it? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. But now let's talk about the giveaway. So Crucial and I are teaming up to give one lucky person this exact drive, one terabyte P1. Now, if you don't have a system that is compatible with this because you don't have the correct slot on your motherboard, you could also have the choice of receiving a one terabyte Crucial MX500, which instead uses a SATA interface, which just about everyone should be able to use. So this is going to be an international giveaway, so everyone is eligible to win. The only exception is if you live in a country that the U.S. has restricted imports and export regulations. And I do have a link down below showing what countries those are. But other than that, this will be global. Crucial is actually limited to where they can send the product, which is in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. So what I'm going to do is, if you win the giveaway and you live outside of one of those countries that Crucial sends to, I'll have them send me the drive first and I will personally ship to whatever country you live in and cover the shipping costs out of my own pocket. I know a lot of my viewers live outside of these three regions and I want everyone to have an equal chance to win. 
Uh, the rest of the details of how to enter are going to be in the detail, not in the details, in the description below the video. Uh, so go there to check that out. Best of luck to everyone entering. I'll draw a winner in about three weeks. And I want to thank Crucial for sending this over for me to check out uh, and for teaming up with me on the giveaway. And I want to thank you all as always for watching and continuing to support the channel. Let me know what kind of drives you have in your system right now and what you use them for and what you would use this for if you want it. I look forward to seeing all your comments down below uh, as well as seeing you in the next video. Bye.